okay, so this is like a little uh, demo track thing. I Not a demo track, but it's more of a sort of a, I guess, a uh, proof of concept type of thing I want to do on the, on the channel that's um, not incredibly high editing, but still engaging form of content that's, uh, you know, it can be done pretty much whenever and you know uploaded pretty much whenever little bite-sized videos i guess well, i say little bite-sized they're not going to be that bite-sized <laughs> an hour long podcast that's that's bite-sized exactly you know like long i that's my number one problem i can't <laughs> i just can't make small videos anymore um um i would recommend just making shorts out of this maybe if you want if you really want to entice some people to watch this series you can make shorts out of like i, I don't know if people clip stuff i don't know if anyone unironically uses the clip feature on youtube but if they do take those clips make them into shorts there you go free promotion easy peasy indeed but yeah this is gonna be i guess a little bit of a small passion project where me and the good buddy here akumu we talk about movies because why not what why not this this life is too short to obsess about cringe we gotta we gotta have fun every once in a while you know what i mean fun how dare you no that's that's no mm -mm. it's too much demand you know <laughs> yeah honestly Can't have fun these days <laughs> for real but uh yeah sometimes it's gonna be more of an older movie but uh today we have two movies that are up for the discussion uh both are recent both had a box office run i think uh the latter most stopped their box office run in the u.s uh but i think this one we're first going to talk about is still in the in the box office uh so akumu <laughs> let's start off with a real banger you know Let, let's start off with the woman king <laughs> Oh, the Woman King. Honestly, like, okay. I think this movie... R only only reason I, I knew about it, aside from the trailers, which I thought were... Okay, they relied a little too much on modern music, which, if I wanted to watch a movie, or, you know, be advertised a movie, you know, set in 18th century Africa, I would want to hear music that's cinematic paralleling that era but you know uh this movie has a massive controversy and it like has not escaped its sense like at all for the fact that this movie has rewritten history oh yeah not even in a good way either oh, yeah no. well it's not uncommon for historical epics to like change things for the sake of story but this movie did something that was unique and i say unique because the woman king is about you know it, it has these amazon warrior black female leads fighting against a racist portuguese slaving like sl like it, it, it like empire i guess you, you we could call it like the the oyo i think there is there is like the main bad guy faction and they're like all four portuguese slavers um in this movie the the only problem is <laughs> um the the amazon warriors are from the dahomey which is apparently historically a massive slave empire. <laughs> um, yeah, hold on, hold on. Uh, you want me to hold on? I'm gonna you. You want to pull up the numbers of uh, as to how many they sold? Oh, uh, what are the exact numbers? Actually, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, that's it's a, a curious endeavor. Um, it's, it's, I, I was told it was typing, like, but it is what it is. Yeah, I was told it was something like, what is it? Like one out of ten. Are like related to a, a slave of the Dahomey or slaves? It's something like that. 
were sold by the Dahomey. Yeah, it's one of those. It's one of those like really scary numbers where it's like, oh wow, that's actually a lot when you think about it. But that now initially, you would think that that they would be playing with that concept, except in the Woman King. Uh, they they just complete not completely. I know some people said they completely scrubbed out the whole Dahomey slaver thing, but um, instead for what the the movie did was they made the Dahomey reluctant slavers that were willing to stop trading slaves to instead bring palm oil to Europe, which was. I don't think people who <laughs> are quite happy to know that that was not historically accurate at all. Um, this is actually like common knowledge you can look up on the internet. Um, apparently the Dahomey were... They continued slaving up until around that... Because they were in, I think, the Nigeria area. And then the British came in essentially to colonize that area and stopped the slave trade in that uh, which essentially meant that they were trading one um, extremely bad immoral empire for another extremely bad immoral empire. Very odd shit. <laughs> uh, very odd how history works. Um, but they never, they never okay, played so with the Okay, so the Dahomey history. are known to be uh, one of the largest exporters of enslaved Africans. Um the Empire was a significant player in the slave trade, supplying up to 20% of the total slave trade. 20% of the total slave trade? <laughs> and they these are the good little, guys? <laughs> they had a whole little part of the market that literally came from the 20% of the slave trade economy, right? Came from them. That's scary. <laughs> That's kind of yeah. scary. But... That here's another thing. They don't play with this at all. They just kind of scrub this from the movie. Which you would think would piss off a lot of like right leaning, you know, whites, but actually the black community was the most that got pissed off by this because well, their history was literally scrubbed and they were lying about essentially a slave trading empire. Now, I, w w when we watch the movie, though, we know why. Because the entire, the movie essentially revolves around, you know, uh, specifically the, the Amazon warriors, the, the Agoji, I, uh, which I think is what they're called. Um, oh, oh, here you go. 1852 to 1880. Do you mind if I read this real quick? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Following, no, 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 that's not it, that's not it. Here it is, suppression of the slave trade. And uh, you know what, if you want to put this in this link in the description, you can go right ahead. This is actually from, uh, what website? Black History Month, the website. Oh, so, that's based. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just listen to this. Uh, two major changes occurred in the 1840s and 1850s, when which significantly altered the politics into Homey. First, the British king, who had been a major purchaser of slaves, began taking an active stance in abolishing the slave trade in the 1830s. They sent multiple diplomatic parties to Gezo to try and convince him to end Dahomey's participation in the trade. All of these were rebuffed, with Gezo worried of the political consequences of ending such trade. King Gezo, who, mind you, is John Boyega's character in this movie. The guy who ultimately in this movie trades palm oil instead because apparently there's an, an economic, uh, more economic benefit to do so for Dahomey because they can produce so much. In, in real life lore, was concerned about the, the political strife that would come from ending the slave trade. That's actually some... Okay. <laughs> Interesting facts here today. Uh, 
But oh, would you like to know about the? Re- would you like me to read the regional power part? Uh, the the oh yeah yeah bring that up is the most interesting. Bring that. Following up. the death, I'm probably going to butcher these names, by the way, but oh well. Following the death of Agaja in 1740, the empire was defined by significant political struggle, though limited largely to with palace walls and deepening engagement with the slave trade. There was a significant secession fight after Agaja's death when the recognized heir was passed over to Teg- Tegbuso? I, I'm butchering this, but who ruled from 1740 to 1774. Tegbuso moved the capital back, the capital city back to Abomi, but had to, what? Hold on. But had to deal with a number of different factions and the powerful members of the kingdom and in keeping conquered territories, territories loyal. At the same time, the empire continued slave raids throughout the region and became a major supplier to the Atlantic slave trade. In the late 18th century, Oyo put pressure on Dahomey to reduce its partition to reduce its participation in the slave trade, largely to protect its own slave trade. And Dahomey complied by limiting some of the slave trade. However, even with this, the empire was a significant player in the was a significant player in the slave trade, supplying up to 20% of the total slave trade and providing the largest portion of revenue for the king. Oh my god, bro. Yeah. And and they betray these 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 this the homie tribe as though it's good. I does I, I, I does the movie even go over the cannibalism? No, they also didn't go over I the don't... fact that Viola Davis's character in real life her first kill, she like like literally drank the guy's blood that she killed wild shit oh. like that but like that leans into another problem of the movie there's a lot of i think they were so they i we know why this was made very evidently they wanted a strong f- heavy female centric action flick that would you know it would bring in you know a strong positive i i, I guess movement or, mm-hmm. I, I guess, it, it's a strong, you know, pro-feminist, pro-black movie. They wanted something that would capture, you know, our time. Which isn't a bad thing. Inherently speaking, this is a very, you know, this is a perfectly reasonable option. The problem is, they used the exact wrong tribe to do this son they like, like they they complete not only did they completely rewrite history they you know what they could have done here's what they could have done here you go okay now this way they can still say the movie's based on a true story right mm-hmm. all they need to do is have the dahomey tribe be the villains okay mm-hmm. acknowledge the cannibalistic um, animalistic uh, slave trading tribe that the Dahomey are. Okay? And okay. instead have the, the main character still be a black female lead, okay? But instead the Dahomey tribe, because the Dahomey tribe did take other uh, Africans and sold them into slavery. So, you have the lead be a slave, have her family killed and slaughtered, and her taken into slavery. She escapes the slavery, okay? Becomes a warrior, okay? Maybe learns from one of the ex-Amazons in the army. Still, this is a little fictional, but I mean, if they're gonna rewrite history, why not do this? This is a much better option. So, then, have her be trained, have her fight, okay? Have her die a sacrificial death where she saves other African slaves from the Dahomey tribe and lessens the Dahomey tribe's hold within that area. She doesn't necessarily defeat the tribe, but she saves some African slaves. She dies a good death. Okay? There you go. Then you can still say it's based on a true story and involve those history aspects, 
but in it, you you instead have these fictional characters but the history itself is still true there you go you get the, you get a better film pretty much with the same black female lead you get something that's also still pro feminist and pro black it's empowering honestly and also so, i also alternatively this might be more of a simple fix but they could have also they could have just done what they were trying to be the next gladiator right could have easily just bullshitted more of it like if they because the problem is they were they were historical enough to hold some kind of accuracy but they bullshitted the parts that were key and integral to the actual to the like drug. to actual history well that's because make... it the thing is you're supposed to be siding with the Dahomey tribe well <laughs> I'm gonna say this now it, well maybe this is an overstep but I want to say that modern audiences aren't gonna want to you know side with brutalistic cannibal uh, slavers but I could be wrong there yeah last I checked I don't think the audience is it would be uh, very um, happy if they knew the history of the Dahomey but here's another thing gladiator right they were trying to be that however gladiator bullshitted all of its history pretty much most of the characters didn't even exist in the same time period it was that bullshit but they made a cohesive story out of that narrative they could have easily done if they wanted to complete bullshit it here's the simple fix the amazons could have been on the oyo side Oh, yeah. That's an even simpler fix. It's an incredibly simpler fix, and not as time-consuming. I would say that it would be less of a of a writing uh, achievement than yours. I think yours would be more nuanced in the time period, but if they wanted a simple historical piece action flick, they could have just made the, the Agoji um, from the, you know the oyo side instead we had to be we we had to be historically accurate where it counts essentially is what it sounds like with this movie um and i mean if their whole thing was to be historically accurate in the first place and tell real history fine but don't leave out the parts that are very key and integral especially in the film industry which you know, you have to, when you're making a historical piece, unless you're Gladiator, you kind of want to tell as much truth as possible. They didn't do that. They didn't do that one bit. They bullshitted it. So the whole movie is ripe with this controversy. Completely needless. And under a good writer, could easily be fixed. I, I don't, I don't want to say that it's the fault of writing solely. It could have easily just been, um, extremely powerful white producers that didn't know, oh. excuse me, didn't know a goddamn thing about African history, but yeah, it, it really, we, we really don't know. It's oh, the, oh, hold on, hold on. Listen to this. So, uh, the army, the movie, they were called, like, the, um, uh, the Agoye, right? Or whatever? The Agoye, the yeah. Amazons? Okay. Here you go. And you were saying to have the, uh, Agoji a part of the, the Oyo, Oyo tribe? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, but listen to this. Listen to this. Okay. So, this is, this, I, this is gonna emphasize that your fix, that your very simple fix is much better. At its height in the 1840s, the West African Kingdom of Dahomey boasted an army so fierce that its enemies spoke of its prodigious bravery. This 6,000 force strong force, known as the Agoji, raided villages under the cover of darkness, took captive and slashed off resistors' heads to return to their king as trophies of war. Trophies of war? Tro yes. The heads of motherfuckers. Yeah. Now, mind you, they're fighting for their slave trade. Uh, 
their king, who's slaver, and it just it's interesting, you know. It's because if the if all that history was included and 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 whatnot, it would the, the movie would be completely different because you wouldn't you wouldn't view Viola Davis's character <laughs> in a positive light. Well, you wouldn't view any be, of them in a positive light. She'd be cutting off heads, enslaving people, drinking blood, and taking those heads back to her king, who was a massive slaver. <laughs> so. Well, they they technically still did slavery, but they were very reluctant about it. Except for John Boyega's wife's character person, for whatever reason. Not entirely sure yeah. why. When it should have been a John Boyega's character that should have been, oh yeah, we, we love our slaves here. Yeah, uh, I, I, it's 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 great to have the uh, the king. Well, that's the weird part. John Boyega's character, you know, King what what the fuck was his name? Gezo. Get King Gezo. He's oh, yeah, he Gezo. becomes anti-slave in like a couple of scenes, and this dude has multiple wives. Like, <laughs> can we talk about how he has, like, multiple wives in this movie? Like, none of, hardly any of, only the one has, like, a speaking role. And apparently she, raging fucking, like, white supremacist, apparently, because she's pro-slaver. Oh, she loves those slaves. She, she loves, loves, those, loves slaves those slaves. For, you know, gotta keep the gold flowing in, you Oh, know? it's great for the economy. It <laughs> it's really amazing for well. the economy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, fucking... <laughs> This dude has multiple wives. Nobody thought that would be ironic. Nobody nobody wanted to play into that in the story. Nobody thought that would be bad to include or give con Nobody thought about that, I don't think, cuz it's just kind of it's just kind of there. Like it doesn't hold any presence in the story, I guess other than historical accuracy, I suppose. But I just find it ironic that this King that turns well, it's, anti-slaver. It's cherry-picked. It's specifically cherry-picked or selective historical accuracy. It's very selective. It's like one moment it it wants to be this, you know, female empowerment movie, and they rewrite certain parts of history, but then they leave in other parts of history like it's no fucking problem. Like the the. You can't just bullshit enough to make your your movie female empowerment, black female empowerment, and not, you know, and then just not acknowledge certain parts of history that are very integral to this to this specific time period in this specific place. Nobody, I I, I swear this had to be. This had to be like commissioned. Or something by some snobby white producer that just didn't know anything, because it <laughs> like it, it feels like that the white because savior complex. No, yeah, because it, it makes no sense. You're being you're putting this very you know pro female empowerment movie out there, but you're going to take away black history, specifically African history. Like, well, that's because it's, you know, it's bad. You know, you can't include the bad parts of African history. Ridiculous. There's bad parts of history in Braveheart and Gladiator. Everywhere. And those are the movies it's trying, it's trying to be the next of. It wants to be and, the next and Braveheart. And also, there was The Northman that came out, um, I think last year? Yeah. That, sh that showed... No, earlier this history. year. Earlier this year. Oh, yeah. And it showed very bad parts of, like viking history and the stuff they did including so slavery <laughs> so why this movie didn't have no we well let's be honest we know why this movie didn't have the balls to to do that but you know what i mean yeah well it's uh, uh, here's the other thing the if the northmen already basically took the spot as the next gladiator so i don't know why they even tried to do that especially this year the amount of like just it, cinematic awe that the Northman has 
is like it it offers you a lot more than this movie does i'll say that it's definitely more it's more worth your money um and that's not because that there's there's an a mostly white cast in there um but it, it it's because it's not only is it basically high cinema pure art but it's an engaging story and it's told with just enough history to where you can actually but it, it also bleeds into that gladiator spot where it's it bullshits a lot because it, it, it plays into that but it, it's melded in such a way where it's a cohesive narrative the problem with the women king is that while it is a cohesive narrative it bullshitted a little bit of history but it did not for the life for the absolute life of it think of the consequences of what it was trying to do but and here's another thing think of how thought-provoking it would be for the filmmake filmmakers to play into the fact that the Dahomey were not exclusively the good guys. Like, that would actually showcase something, like, to think about. It's like, it, 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 it creates an extra layer of drama that can actually be written into the script in some way. But they didn't go with that. It's very heavily, you know, it, it, it was female empowerment first and then history later. And again, if you want the female empowerment movie, that is fine. Nobody is saying, don't do it. The problem is, you can't just bullshit history. Very you know, crucial parts of history that can actually offend people, especially today, and then <laughs> and then act like it's not gonna blow over. This is a heavy time where controversy weighs over people's heads a lot more. Somehow nobody thought about that when making this movie. With cancel culture being ripened and shit, <laughs> and nobody thought, hmm, maybe we shouldn't make the slavers the good guys. Well, that's the thing in the movies. They aren't really as big as slavers as they are. The movie goes over that, but so vaguely. Like, it's 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 um, it's um sugar-coated to such a massive degree that it's almost gone. I, I wouldn't say sugar-coated as much as it's more swept under the rug. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a better way to put it. Like... I guess we could start to go into the story more when we do this now. Uh, like, when they get into the port, right? And it's an Oyo-controlled port, apparently. And the pork chickies are there, and they're, you know, they're selling slaves and shit. And it's like, so... They want to show this part, but they don't show the actual truth of the Dahomey tribe they just they'll show the truth of every everything else in history yeah especially yeah, the Portuguese the, and their yeah. massive slave trade empire which they'll, they'll show the Portuguese uh selling slaves uh but they won't show the Dahomey selling slaves or taking slaves no if anything the Oyo which are I, 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 I'm judging by the information you've given me more in the right to be the good guys than the fucking Dahomey uh oh, no, fucking no. um I don't I didn't exactly comment much on the Oyo but I could look up stuff about them but from just what I read about the Dahomey the Dahomey are way fucking worse in reality than than the, the movie ever even goes into ever honestly well they didn't want again it's it's all that they wanted the female empowerment movie but they Even did not think the of movie, the consequences here's the thing this movie feels like if the dahomey tribe were still here today and they had like 
made this movie as a propaganda piece. I, it's not a propaganda piece. Like that's that's not what it is. But it feels like this is something like, you know how North Korea puts that propaganda out to like, or, or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It feels like something like the Dahomey would make in modern day to make themselves look better. Obviously, it's not, but you get what I mean. Oh yeah, on <laughs> it well. Yeah, no, that kind of sums up that this movie, really. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. aside from the controversy, though, here's here's getting into the big part. All of the controversy we talked about, which takes up thirty minutes of this of this video, uh, as of the time of recording, uh, none of it matters in the movie. Like, you go in and you actually observe it from a plot perspective. It's subpar to passable at best. Like, you have your hero's journey-ish arc with um, the the female lead, which isn't Fiola Davis. It's um, this younger uh, daughter of a random Dahomey family who... <laughs> Will just not. Will, will, will you fucking explain that? The, he who, the, who she keeps getting like thrown into like these mar marriage attempts by family by these other families with these other guys and it's just not working. So the father is like, "Fuck this! I'm just gonna throw her into the into. To, I'm just gonna offer her to the king," which sounds really weird when you when you first hear it. But then they go. And it's like, oh yeah, she's just gonna become. And an Amazon and a Goji. Uh, God, I love that title. That's fucking amazing. Um, the name of the, the name of their army. their elites, their elite female warriors. The yeah, that that is a good name. It's fucking banger. I like that. that that's side ta side tangent. But there's a lot of concepts in this movie. I wish they like actually delved into, but they just never did. Like they. For a movie that's set in 18th century Africa, kind of, it, it, it sometimes it does shit with like the actual culture of the time. You don't really get to see much of it. it it's immediately segued into either some bullshit with the Portuguese or you know other plot points come in. But it, it's not. It does embrace a little bit of that. You know, the culture, the time period, obviously, it has to. It's a fucking historical piece. But I was never truly fully sucked in into this, you know, this world, you know, that they're trying to build with this actual history. It's it's almost like it just sometimes it just kind of feels like a set piece. Um, and speaking of set pieces, um, John Boyega, <laughs> uh, he's... He's definitely a set piece. Um, I did not care for his acting at all. I don't know about you. In this, in this movie, he's like the one actor in this. I completely did not buy for a moment that he was in the role. Like, yeah, no, yeah, it felt really off. He was trying. He was trying to go for this like stoic, you know fuck you to the white man king and he just he's just so he, i don't know if he's miscasted or just improperly directed but he is just i totally do not buy him in this role at all um and it's not to say he couldn't be in a you know a stoic african king role uh, he could definitely be a, a, a T'Challa. You know, if they still had him around, he could have definitely picked up the reins after Chadwick Boseman. Um, but in this role as uh, Gezo, I don't buy him for a second. He is, like, so... So not there. I just don't... He, he feels... He really does feel like he's just putting on a performance. Um... Then it, it, it that's not something that's carried over to the other actors. A lot of the other actors are fine. They're good. 
Viola Davis is good. The main lead is good. Uh, the mixed race uh, kind of love interest, which they have in the movie for the female lead. Um, passable. Portuguese guy was passable. That's kind of most of the acting in this. It's really just John Boyega's acting that has the most oddball when when you watch the movie it's like he's almost fo phoning it in it's like it's like he's just kind of paid to stand there and act like royalty and he's just kind of like he kind of knows he's like doing this for the paycheck or something i don't know which but is the vibe it, there's two vibes that it gives me one it's like when you're trying to uh Put a puzzle together and you just want to force that piece in there that doesn't even belong to the puzzle or another thing it reminds me of is um he more so feels like an ex like a, a background act because if he's you know just he's not but he, he, in the movie he feels like a an extra oh. well, well he's kind of he kind of doesn't play that big of a role in the movie it's really the story of the agoji and you know that war between the oyo uh, John Boyega has very little to, other than being the king. He really does not play that big of a role other than... He might as well as just, like, the throne. He might as well as literally just be the throne. Like, just stand there. <laughs> Honestly, one of his wives could have taken up his role and just been this, and we would have just, we would have just been like, oh, well, that, that's the movie. Because he does not, he does not play that big of a role in this. And I get why i guess i think but you know gezo was apparently you know he's a, apparently a big fucking deal to the homie history you would think he would play almost more of a role other than existing abolish slavery and did basically telling off the white man none of which is actually what gezo did but it, you know it, the way it is, I guess. Uh, when it comes to the story of the movie, which all, you know, that's really what the meat and potatoes is, because honestly, the score is fine, cinematography is gorgeous, um, acting is okay to passable, uh, stuff like that. The story is not really that interesting it it plays I, I was bored the entire fucking time yeah I, there was nothing that really interested me you were bored i was like i was in the beginning i was I, I I took out away all the controversy out of my head going into this because I know it was gonna bog me down the moment I went in it with the context. I just like scrubbed that from my brain, and I was like, in the beginning, I was like, okay, this is a this is a a decent you know beginning act. It's a little dull. It could play into um, the politics a little more, which something that i rarely fucking say about modern movies um but it it, it doesn't it, it later into the movie it gets slowly but surely it starts to become essentially a default hero's journey storyline with a, a hint of historical accuracy just a hint a little dabble a little dabble in um. history the part that like made me completely lose interest because it was it was sort of like a it started at the base and then it just went down sort of downhill gradually not massive not like a steep drop but a gradual downhill um and the the part that made me sort of walk away from it is i think that they were walking near the river uh viola davis's character was talking to the girl the the, the pretty much the lead mm -hmm. um and they were having a conversation and and then Viola Davis looked away and sort of did this weird camera pan thing and that it was that like that moment specifically that I just I could I had to force myself to like keep my eyes on the screen and I'd find myself looking away bored constantly afterwards. yeah yeah honestly and 
there's what bothered me a lot of the times is because Viola Davis played this character that I I guess is the sword master of the main of the main lead the main female lead um almost stereotypically um and there's a twist in there which I'm not gonna spoil the twist it's plays very little part into the movie um but it, it when it comes to the story it has it's essentially point a to point b, b uh hero's journey um she the main character is taken out of her you know her living situation to essentially become one of these agoji uh amazon warriors learns to how to fight and uh she sucks at it at first but eventually she gets better and better over time you know the typical hero's journey shit and in between there there's these very dumb decisions that happen i like for example the oyo come in and they ask for tribute for some reason which includes muskets for some reason it's never entirely explained uh and then it's revealed that the main bad guy coincidentally is just somebody from viola davis's character's past and uh it, it, it plays into that oddly weirdly because um well let's just say they did not meet in a very consensual manner don't worry we'll get into that later um and so the big brain idea because apparently the dahomey are not as powerful as the oyo in this movie again for some reason um viola davis decides to get a bunch of the the agoji together basically do a little trolling in this portuguese port that they control kinda it's that's never explained either and <laughs> basically declare war and like <laughs> in that very moment like just zero conse zero consequences comes to them for literally starting a war i <laughs> it just happens i guess and they're just and the king just rolls with it john boyega really just rolls with it he's like oh, well, well that happened i mean i i let them do it so you know it's fine i like that just happens i guess um and <laughs> basically the main lead saves viola davis from the main bad guy the, the you know the literal rapist know mind what you're you talking about. what's that it, it, it clicked in my head for a second i wasn't able to remember it and then it clicked. oh yeah <laughs> um that well she gets fucking she saves her life viola davis's life and then viola davis later on chastises the main character for it and it becomes this winded speech about you know survival and war and you know that you have I, was to be that when they were walking sort of near the river that was in the river yeah which yeah that that's the thing that made me so completely uninterested with it Oh, yeah, because she saved her life. <laughs> and she gets chastised for it. So it was like, I guess she just wanted to die. <laughs> she just wanted to commit Sinpuku right there. Um, and at that point, it just, it gets slightly better, I guess. And then it just, it just becomes nothing. Because then the Portuguese come in uh they have this big last trial for the trainees they do like a, a relay lace race or something through vines and thorns and uh cutting off barbed wire heads and shit and of, of course the portuguese uh half portuguese half dahomey love interest ish guy is there 
Um, and that also ties into the part where John Boyega basically tolls up the Portuguese after that, you know, trial thing, and they become the trainees become, you know, members of the Agoji. Kind of does nothing with that. Uh, they kind of do a sort of thing where the main lead, she kind of is interested in the guy, never do anything with it. Um, which I'm not against, but you, it, it was, it's kind of made this big deal about her trying to choose this path between the essentially being in love and having a man or fighting for you know yeah because um uh, one of the rules uh, when it comes to being in the agoji uh or that's am i saying it right agoji yeah the agoji yeah okay one of the rules is um you can't bear bear children or have a lover like you're you're you are dedicated to the amazon army and so that's that's i think that's the um the toss-up but the thing and i think what you're trying to say is they're trying to uh, put a little bit of tension on that choice of hers on whether she's going to commit to that or do what she wants to do. Um, but then they sort of just casually uh, wave it around a little bit, and then it carelessly just blows off in the wind. They don't do anything with it at the end. By the time it comes to... I, eventually, there was going to be this big moment where she was going to have to choose, obviously. That was basically summed up in this movie... With at least 15 seconds of screen time. She looks at the guy as the uh, after the final battle and, you know, they... I fuck, I guess, and they just... She just goes with the, goes with the Amazons. Really, Barry is just no build-up to that moment. No tension. No nothing. It's... This really shy pass off of where like yeah she needs no man I guess and then just the rest of the the you know the fourth act um post climax thing happens I guess um and there's really not there's really not much that happens story wise in this movie it's really just a boiled down paint by numbers uh hero's journey story with you know historical theming that's really all the story is um can i say it did it bad no can i say it did it well not really it it's this weird in between of being passable but not very engaging if that makes any sense um, and I mean, you, you were bored by it, so I, you know, that, that would probably be the big, the big problem here. Uh, which, another subject I wanted to talk about really quickly because we're kind of nearing the point of, it's kind of where the subject is sort of dying off here. Um, this movie, when it comes to its action... Um, for being PG-13, it is extremely R-rated. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's it's almost Northman level of choreography fights, of, like, brutal kills. Um, now, keep in mind, like, I was looking away from the screen certain times, uh, but the few moments that I did glimpse when I forced myself to watch, um, so that, I, you know, we could get through it, was they were really good really brutal um deaths and just downright slaughters a lot of throat cutting and shown throat cutting <laughs> a lot of yeah like they showed that shit which mind you is not something pg-13 is known for a lot of leaving the heavy pg-13s one they only say fuck once and two Throat cutting is absolutely shown off screen, or at least implied. Like, even in Pirates of the Caribbean, they had throat cutting, but that was off screen and implied. Here, they just boldface do it. And not only do they boldface do it, they... The Agoji in a ritual cut themselves 
to basically pour blood into a bowl that is of some religious significance, which uh, never goes into the world building of that either. Uh, I say world building. That's literally real life war. I mean, lore. Um, there's, oh yeah, there's implied rape. That's cool. Um, and you see, it, it's really gritty. And it's like, <laughs> this is not P, this is not PG-13. I don't buy this, that this was PG-13. I think, I think somebody, maybe somebody was sucking dick at the MPA. <laughs> that had <laughs> listen listen i'll give you a little bit ahead as long as as long as you let this absolutely brutal movie just just, just give it a pg-13 that's give it, you give it a pg-13 and i give you sucky sucky that's okay? probably what happened because i don't buy for a second the mpa th said that this was pg-13 this is 100% an R-rated movie. They just let it be PG-13. Yeah, no. I, it was, you know, you, you make this PG-13 and I give you the, the, the happy ending. <laughs> the happy ending. They probably did it because they knew if it was R-rated, it would not make as much money. Cause I, of which I'm surprised. That I'm happy that it did make back its money, but I'm surprised by that fact. Oh, yeah. No, I, it, I'm... I'm glad it made its money back at the box office too. As much as I criticize it for a lot of its shit, especially historical inaccuracies, I'm glad that it's keeping like the studio's pockets, you know, filled up with, and they, that money can go to future projects, which I do want to see because this is the first tri-star picture in fucking forever. And I mean, for the first time, TriStar has been heard again in with major movies in forever. Decent, passable, not the best movie, at least passable. Uh, it, it is passable. Um, I think if you can go into the movie without the controversy in mind and just look at it as a movie, it's passable. And you, if you enjoy brutal kills, you, well, you're going to love this movie. Um, because I would say in, in terms of brutal killing, it's close to the Northman and a kind of gladiator, but not really. It's, I guess you could say technically within that genre when it comes to brutality, but it's not to those levels. Um, and I, here's, and the reason though why I said I was surprised why it did so well is not only because of the controversy from rewriting history, but Viola Davis's antagonization of the audience. Uh, but aside from that, if you can go into the movie and watch it, I would say it's a passable. Yeah, where Viola Davis was getting on to people saying shit because they were criticizing uh, the Women King, I don't know if she said anything about them being, like, white supremacists or some shit, but... No, she didn't necessarily accuse the racist. She was saying that, like... I don't want to... I honestly don't want to misquote. Um, but something about, you know, it being a black female lead, uh, and, and so, so people should definitely want something to see it. I, I'm paraphrasing here. You, if people want to look it up and put it in the comments specifically, I just know that it was it was... From when I had seen it, it was very antagonistic of the audiences. Something you'd see, like, uh, their productions and studios and directors on. Felt, it felt almost Ryan Johnson. Um, yeah, but, which is a sad but, trend people are doing now, where instead of taking criticism, they're just, well, antagonizing the critics and the fans even though their movies are not good in the first place, but whatever. And it's, uh, I don't know. I think that if you want a historical epic in this year, just watch The Northmen. If you're looking for a female empowerment movie that's got badass action, uh, watch.
watch everything everywhere all at once <laughs> because that'll oh my god that movie was a oh that was amazing oh dude yeah, this that has year good fight scenes yeah and that was and that had that was a much better and very you know it's female oriented a little bit at least the movie was able to keep my attention the entire fucking time unlike this movie <laughs> completely in the Northman was able to keep my attention the entire time. When 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 Joe showed me fucking Gladiator first time, um, that kept my attention. This movie didn't. But this, no, like this movie couldn't. I mean, its action scenes, you know, were good. But I was so fed up with it at that point that only if I was only able to catch a few like glimpses and moments of those action scenes because I didn't feel like looking at the screen. I had to force myself. Yeah. But. And the action I, was sparse in this movie, too. Yeah, yeah, it was. But everything else about the movie had really killing it. So, action-wise, the movie's great in that response. Uh, but, it, like you said earlier, it's it's a, a rather... Um, rather simple, like, he, uh, hero's journey tale, it said. Uh, but it's got really uh brutal action for a, for a pg-13 film yeah like those two sort of things make them is i mean because the controversy necessarily doesn't but just looking at the movie for what it brings to the table with those two things i mean obviously the black female lead, like from a writing and like construction perspective those two things but the northman and those other stories i would say i mean considering both of those movies did better than this movie i think i think at the box office uh, i think the northman did not make its money back unlike this oh. movie which is sad but the Northman That's is crazy. All objectively a better film. Um, well, it was, I think. It was like, I don't think it was put to very many theaters, if I remember correctly. Although it's a fucking banger. Yeah, yeah. So is Everything but, Everywhere, but I think that made yeah, its money back. Yeah, did that movie make its money back? That, I think that one made it money back, but not the Northman. I think the uh, Northman I mean, was like just shy outside of its budget. That is unfortunate, but everything that, that name I can everything, everything, everything everywhere whatever. all at once. Yes, that movie. Uh, if you want like strong, yeah, just as you said, strong female lead, good fights, go fucking there. That movie, is something else, and even more gory. Oh yeah, and a heavy that R movie. rating. Both were heavy R ratings, but both provide more. You know, it's a lot more, which this movie did not provide. Yeah. It's kind of sad. This movie started off with... this year, See, this, this year started off with some bangers. Everything Everywhere. Batman. Uh, the Northman. And then later this year, we got Thor Love and Thunder. The Woman King. And now... The next movie oh. we're going to talk about in the next part <laughs> oh, of this. God. Bros. Oh, no. You're going to, we're going to, you're going to love that. You're going to love what we have to talk about with bros. It's going to be phenomenal. Oh, oh no. Love of Christ. <laughs> he has a, he has a few choice words to say about it. So yeah, uh, we'll see you. We'll see you then guys. Catch you on the flip side.